Well, good morning. I say that, but uh, of course, this is going to be a recording uploaded. It's morning for me. I don't know when you're watching it, but uh, I wanted to to come to you again. I've had a lot of views on the first video log that I put out, and hopefully it seems to be an encouragement to our people and maybe even uh, those outside of FBC, whoever might view it. I just want to offer encouragement from Scripture, and so... Uh, coming back to you again, hopefully we can accomplish that very thing today, just to point us to the things that we can learn from and and gain encouragement from God's own word. Uh, so here's what I want to do again today. In this case, I want to look again at a biblical character who experienced a lot of what we're experiencing right now, isolation, fear, some anxiety, frustration. And then I want to let Scripture, as we look into a particular situation with that character, let Scripture inform our situation as we just try to faithfully apply the timeless universal principles from from that person's life and, and let that then direct our reactions and inform them. And then I'd like to invite you to join with us in singing a couple of songs that will help us reflect and also maybe offer some encouragement and so that's kind of the map for the next few minutes that I want to spend with you, and hopefully the Lord will bless it. Now let's go and ask Him to do that very thing right now. Our Father, we come to You. Uh, we we lean heavily on You. We thank of You as our Heavenly Father, as we've been taught to by Your Word. And fathers care for and provide for those who belong to them to Him. And uh, so, Lord, we we seek that from You today, even as we look into Your Word and and identify with one of the, the people that you have uh, brought into, not only to be recorded in your word, but also one who you use to uh, deliver your inspired word to us. So help us learn from this, uh, this person and not only his words, but his situation today, but especially his understanding. It's all your word to us. I pray that we'd be strengthened and encouraged through it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the person that I'm referencing that I just want to explore a little bit today is Elijah. Uh, you're probably aware that Elijah was known for being one of the biblical characters and historical characters who experienced a lot of angst. We get a kind of a sense of his personality that he was frustrated a lot. It had a powerful ministry, of course, and is even one of the authors of a, a good amount of recorded scripture in the Old Testament. But, you know, Elijah struggled in a lot of ways that many of us do generally, but especially is being felt uh, widely by a lot of us today. Elijah was known as the weeping prophet. Uh, he penned, most likely, uh, he penned the, the book of Lamentations. So we could see he, he's a guy filled with angst, but also God used him in a mighty way. So we want to look at a situation today that's recorded for us in his life that might feel pretty familiar to many of us today. And that would be in the the uh, the book of First Kings. And so I'm going to encourage you to turn there. And as you do, then you can follow along. I'm not going to read the whole story. I'll save that time. But you can pause the video and just uh, grab your app or your phone or your Bible and go to First Kings 19. You're probably familiar with the story if you... Uh, I've heard very many Old Testament stories how Ahab is in a lot of stress because, you know, he's been confronting the false prophets and God's used him in a mighty way. But it, that put him on the radar of a wicked queen. Queen Jezebel has declared that um, she's going to make sure that Elijah's dead by tomorrow. And so Elijah takes off. He's running for his life, literally. And so when we jump into that chapter... Elijah is alone, he's afraid for his life, and he's in the wilderness. Now, he's run off uh, out into the wilderness past Beersheba, a day's travel, it says. And I want us to first notice his natural response, and this we're experiencing natural responses to our crisis situation today. Elijah was no different in his time. He's exasperated. We can see that in verse 4 where he says, I've had enough, Lord. Just take my life. I don't know if you've ever been that desperate before to actually pray something like that, but 
certainly you can understand this degree of angst. He's afraid for his life, so he's asking God to take it. A little bit of irony there. But we see that's a natural response for Elijah, and it probably feels a little familiar as a response to a critical situation for many of us today. But then I want to notice God's responses. First, God sends an angel to Elijah to provide physical nourishment. We can see that in verses 5b through 8a. And actually, the angel gives him nourishment a couple of times. It's, it's uh, one of several pairs in this text where something's being happened, uh, something's being done twice, and Elijah is being told twice to take this nourishment because he needs the physical strength. Then we see that God not only provides physical nourishment through this angel, but God provides spiritual nourishment. First, we see that he does that through his presence um, as the prophet Elijah goes to the mountain of God in verse 8b. That, by the way, since it says the mountain of God and it's described as Horeb there, this is the place that Moses had received the law where God had revealed himself to Moses and then later on God gave Moses the law. Now we're we're supposed to understand uh, that this seems to be a, a parallel to Moses' experience in more than one respect. Not only that he's at the mountain, the mountain of God, but also we're going to see in verse 9 that uh, and many commentators believe that Elijah may well be in the same cleft in the rock or cave it is here in this text where God came to Elijah. This may be very the, pl the very place where Moses was being sheltered from God when he asked to see God's glory. We might see more of that parallelism as we walk through it and as you read through it on your own. But f right now, I want us to see that God's providing nourishment through his presence. He's gone to the mountain of God, so he's the place where God was known to have been. And then we also see that it says in verse 9b, or in verse 9b, that God came to him. And that's an important statement. We also see that God told him to stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence in verse 11. So God is providing nourishment just by the fact that he is there with his presence. That's an important truth for us. Secondly, we see that God is providing spiritual nourishment, as he does for us, through his word. In 9b, we can see that he's speaking to Elijah through his word. That's that prophetic formula of the word of the Lord uh, carries a lot of weight and authority. Now, as God is speaking to Elijah through his word, we can see that his word probes, first of all, he asks two different times, what are you doing here? Now, this isn't because God doesn't know, but you see in verse 9 and verse 13, God asks Elijah this question because he's, he's calling Elijah to probe his own situation. And that's a, that's a really helpful thing for us. God doesn't expect us to not have angst or not to be fearful initially. He understands our natural reactions. But he wants us to think about them and then let his word speak into them. So he asks the question, what are you doing here? His word probes. Secondly, we see that his word corrects and informs. Even though God calls us to come to him honestly with our natural reactions, and we see it reflected here in Elijah's statement two times, again, another pair. In verses 10 and 14, Elijah makes this statement. He kind of goes on a rant. And summarily, he says, I alone am left. You know, uh, all the prophets are being destroyed and I alone am left. Now, we know that that's an exaggeration because um, in the literary context, not too far ahead of this, before this in the biblical text, we see that another prophet has actually been instrumental in being used by God to spare the lives of a hundred prophets, Obadiah was uh, the prophet that had, uh, you know, led to the rescue of a hundred prophets. So it's not true that Elijah alone is left, but he's still expressing this angst two times. But then we see that God's word corrects and informs that perception of Elijah. We see in verse 18, 
I will leave, or some translations even say I have, I will leave 7,000 who have not bowed to Baal. So the reality is, no, Elijah, you're not the only one left. In fact, I've got 7,000 that I'm going to preserve through this situation in the coming uh, months as more devastation comes to the people of God. So we see that God's word probes and God's word then corrects and informs our perspective. And then we see that God's word directs. Verses 15 to 17, we see God's got work for Elijah to do. He's pulling attention off of himself, not only by correcting his perspective, but also by drawing his attention to how God still needs and means to use him as an instrument in serving other people and serving his purposes and his plans. So how does this inform us <clears throat> as we think through our situation and we look for the, the principles that are timeless and transcend that situation that we can plug into ours today as most of us, well, almost certainly as you're viewing this, you may, be, may well be in your own home uh, just sort of practicing social distancing. Well, here's some things that I think we can draw from this as we apply it. First, while some people feel lonely and or afraid, filled with angst much of the time, uh, many of, more of us are understanding what, how those people feel, and we're likely feeling this way during this time. We have to understand it's natural to be exasperated, and we may even be as desperate as Elijah saying, I've had enough, maybe even going so, going so far as to uh, take me out of this situation, just take my life. Um, understanding that that may be a natural response to crisis, we need to understand that natural response response needs to be informed and, and directed by Scripture. So we've got, to let the, we've got to let the Bible direct us to a spiritual response. That's what happens for us Christians. We look to God's Word and let it then inform and, and change our responses. So how do we do that? Well, first, we trust God to meet our physical needs just as Elijah did. Um, God's taking care of our physical needs. There are a lot of ways that's happening right now, and we need to lean on one another as agents of God to, you know, angels, if you will, in our own situation. So I encourage you, reach out to your brothers and sisters. We in leadership are trying to reach out to you. If you've got physical needs that, that you just can't meet right now, we're here for you. So please don't hesitate to contact us and let us know if you've got a physical need. Trust God in that way. Next thing is that even more than uh, trusting God for physical nourishment and needs, we need to seek spiritual nourishment from God's Word. And that means we can be honest with God, just as Elijah was when God asks, what are you doing here? We can just be honest. God can handle it. Feel free to share your natural reaction with God, but then, then look to Him and His Word. So in that sense, what we're doing is what Elijah did. We're drawing near. Eli Elijah came to be near to God. How do we draw near to God? Well, we can't do it in a public gathering like we're used to, but we draw near through his word. And hopefully this, this little video would be a tool for that. So draw near to God and, and draw from and be encouraged by his perspective. God is speaking to us in our situation just like he did to Elijah. You feel alone. I understand that. I'm there with you in that situation. You feel alone, but you're not. There are a lot of others feeling the way you are and take comfort in that. Be strengthened by God's own presence, and be reminded that there are others who are God's own faithful, just like Elijah could be reminded by God himself. And then, as with Elijah, we can see in those last few verses that Elijah had, God had uh, action for Elijah to take, God has action for us to take. Reach out to others and serve them. Don't just reach out if you have need, but also reach out to, to fill need and to encourage others. Right now, um, a phone call goes a long way, or you can reach out via email or a Facebook post, uh, post, other social media, or maybe even a silly video or something like what I'm doing right now. Just find ways to encourage other people, use technology. And of course, it's possible to have physical interactions with other people. Encourage your family members that you may already be at home with and 
or when you have engagements with people when you go out, maybe you're buying a few groceries to catch up or whatever, be encouraging to even those total strangers. So take action to be ministers of grace as we have opportunity. And lastly, I'd just say, just be encouraged. Right now, it might seem like, you know, if we think to uh, Elijah's experience that he had there, much like no, or Moses' experience, but with Elijah, he had this, uh, God, God protected him in, in this cave, this cleft in the rock, while outside there was a raging wind, so, uh, you know, some kind of a storm, and then, then there was a, 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 uh, an earthquake and then a fire. Well, right now it might feel like that for you, like there's a tornado or earthquake or fire outside, but, but if we can um, take advantage of our sheltering, that God provides, and then just listen amid all that chaos, listen for the quiet voice of the Lord. We can be strengthened as Elijah was. Our, our God is protecting you in his rock. And of course, by rock, it's not a physical rock. Our protection is because of our faith in Christ Jesus. He is our rock. God is our rock. So you are secure in Jesus. Rest in that and hear God's quiet voice speaking through his word in that. Well, uh, having looked in his word, and hopefully we can draw these encouragements and and maybe some, um, oh, I don't know, some direction from God's word. I, I just want to pull a Mr. Rogers neighborhood right now. And I would say, let's go down to our living room because uh, the kids came over. And we want to invite you to sing a couple of songs with us. The first song is called Whisper, and it just reflects on uh, this situation and the and the concept around this situation where there's a storm raging outside, but God continues to demonstrate his love toward us in just a quiet whisper of his word and his comfort and his presence. And um, then secondly, we'll sing uh, certainly a much more familiar song for most of you, a song uh, about our rock, the rock of ages. So uh, hang with me as we go down to the living room and then please join in singing with us. And then I'll come back for just a brief closing prayer. And we'll conclude. I come to you with my distress. You comfort me with your promises. I sorrow for my sinfulness. Cover me with your righteousness. You whisper your love to me. You whisper your love to me. I
All right, well, I hope that was an encouragement as you had an opportunity to sing with us and keep looking for opportunities to just get in the Word and, and sing to the Lord even by yourself or with whoever may be kind of sequestered with you in your own home and keep taking, uh, I don't know, encouragement from these ways that we can worship God. Um, let me just close this little video in prayer and hopefully uh, if this is an encouragement to you, share it with others that you're connected with and maybe it'll be encouragement to them too. And to that effect, let me close in prayer and ask God uh, to continue to move among us. Uh, again, Lord, we come to you. We thank you and praise you that you are our rock and that you are steadfast no matter what kind of chaos is going on in the lives around us and in our own life and our situation. Uh, Lord, we rest in you as eternal and unchanging and steadfast. And also, Lord, that you're caring just as you did with Elijah you are right there and you make your presence known in our situations and you are big enough to hear us vent of our frustrations, but you also are loving enough to give us your word and direct us to the spiritual realities that transcend far above and beyond the situations in which we find ourselves. And help us, Lord, then to take action as ministers of grace to others. Help us to encourage one another in every way that's uh, available to us right now. As you are faithful, Lord, help us to be faithful, and we will just continue to worship and praise you for your goodness in all these ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks all. Uh, hang in there, and we'll just keep trying to encourage one another.